Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have a look at the latest from Storm Corrie which at the moment is battering parts of Scotland. It will be slowly spreading southwards and eastwards over the next 12 hours before it should be clearing by around lunchtime tomorrow. Now currently we have some very heavy rain and snow over pit parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland and it will be pushing into parts of Northern England. We do have an amber warning for wind coming into force. At five, uh, by 5 p.m. this evening which will be lasting most of the night only expiring tomorrow morning and we will also be seeing some very gusty winds down the east coast tomorrow morning for rush hour so some areas even down in the southeast might not look too bad this evening but by tomorrow morning it could be pretty disruptive so make sure you stay safe out there and take the necessary precautions if you are in the path of any of these very strong winds and uh, rain and snow so do remember, if you enjoy my videos, make sure to like and subscribe. And remember to follow me to as well, the links in the description. Now, first of all, I just want to say, uh, pray, um, take commemorations for um, two people I've seen who have now sadly died um, as a result of Storm Malik over the last 24, 36 hours. Unfortunately, I, I've seen only only two reports so far, but that's too, too many. And this is why we see Met Office issuing these warnings, because um, I think it was a young child and an older woman, unfortunately, were um, killed by falling trees. Uh, and as I said in my video yesterday and the day before, that even if you're not in the strongest wind areas, we can still see these impacts. Uh, and unfortunately, uh, we've had uh, some tragedies from these storms. So please make sure if you are in the impact zone, the main impact zone from this storm, do take the necessary precautions um, and do stay safe out there. As I don't really want to be, I really hope we don't hear any uh, of any more fatalities as a result of these consecutive storms now if we do have a look at the live radar you can see the big swirl of precipitation very heavy rain and hill snow as well seeing significant snowfall over the hills again mainly over the highest ground so four five hundred meters of elevation um so not hitting too many populated areas but if you are getting trapped in this it could be really quite disruptive and it could fall to low levels for a time um, and we could see some more snow um, tomorrow morning um, into tomorrow evening as we do see it cold air as this is a cold front spreading through um, right now. You see, regardless of snow, it's very heavy precipitation. So you'll be seeing heavy, squally rain and the strongest winds are going to be along this cold front and in behind it around the swirl of this storm. storm significant conditions. Now, this rain band will be moving slowly southwards and eastwards. It should start to sort of disband over the course of this evening. Um, the precipitation will become lighter and more patchy, but there still could be some squally showers, um, heavy rain and some winchiness over uh, in the north as well as it does move through um, and all areas will be seeing thicker cloud and some outbreaks of rain for a period of time it may not be too significant in the south there may be real minimal precipitation in the south but still will be slowly moving through and we'll be seeing these wind gusts really pick up over the course of the next few hours and as i said we do have an amber warning in force for winds this evening um, at 5 p.m and we have a widespread yellow warning covering most of the northern half of the united kingdom but yeah real photogenic storm here with this big swirl on the radar um hopefully though it does degrade over the next few hours in terms of precipitation um as again not only the strong winds but when you have almost or very very low visibility because of heavy precipitation snow and the wind combining all together that's where we can get real dangerous conditions um, and hopefully this does dissipate over the next few hours um, and we can hopefully keep everyone safe now if we do have a look at the latest weather warnings you can see we do have amber and yellow warnings in force at the moment amber warning in force for northern scotland um high winds are likely to cause disruption and uh, cause damage and travel disruption from 5 p.m this evening and so until 6 a.m tomorrow so the bit the peak winds should have cleared by tomorrow rush hour um thankfully um so should not be major major disruption getting to uh, uh, doing anything tomorrow morning there could still be some residual disruption of course from trees down and stuff like that in the morning but hopefully there won't be uh, any of the massive gusts in the morning but if we do have a look at the further details you can see high winds so associated with storm cory will spread eastwards across scotland later on sunday before easing from the east early on monday in coastal areas and over hills and mountains gusts are expected at 70 or 80 miles per hour and potentially 
90 miles per hour. Um, inland, gusts will mostly peak at 60 to 70 miles per hour, very likely, and high impact. You can see it's not too far away, actually, from being a red warning. So, yeah, don't expect a red warning with this. Um, dissimilar to Storm Arwen, where we saw 100 mile per hour winds combined with extreme heavy snow, and that's why we saw a red warning for that. Here, amber warning, I think, is sufficient. If we do have a look at a widespread yellow warning, um, Storm Corey will bring a spell of very windy weather and high westerly, then northwesterly winds uh, uh, to parts of Scotland, Northern Ireland, and Northern England later on Sunday before winds ease during Monday. Again, 50 60 miles per hour widely, and uh, again, could be slightly higher in a few locations now if you do have a good monday you see those warnings continue and the yellow warning expires um, by midday so still some strong gusts around uh, uh, for tomorrow morning but not quite as strong as we're going to be seeing over the course of this evening now we also do have an ice warning in force um, which is from midnight tonight until 10 a.m tomorrow and that's because we're going to see wintry showers falling behind that cold front and temperatures will be dropping very low so we could be seeing some icy conditions as well again because we want two centimeters above 200 meters and they will be convective of nature so it's very difficult to say exactly where we're going to see the biggest snow total some area may see very little others could see a few centimeters as said here um, because it is, of course, of a convective nature, things lining up um, with the showers. So, of course, we'll have to play that by ear. So if you are um, going out tomorrow morning, make sure you do keep an eye on the radar um, before you go out and make sure you do dress appropriately because it could be, it, it, even today, it, it, in some many areas, it's sort of 10 degrees, but by tomorrow morning, it could be around freezing or below that. So make sure you do um, stay up to date with the forecast where you are. So if we do now have a look at the latest from the UK Metaverse run. Now, this is the three o'clock run. This is the latest data we have. Um, and if we have a look at wind gusts, you can see as the storm approaches, as I'm recording this, the pig winds are still out um, in the North Atlantic uh, around 2, 3 p.m. You can see 40, 50 mile per hour gusts. But as I said, it's behind the cold front around that sort of um, around the, the low pressure system, the center of the low, which is spreading into the Northern Isles. You can see 80 90 mile per hour winds and maybe even 100 miles per hour gusts in a few places and you can see those spreading over 70 80 mile per hour gusts over the higher ground 50 60 70 mile per hour in low lying areas by this evening and you can see the winds probably peaking for widespread areas around midnight with 70 80 mile per hour down the east coast 70 60 uh, miles per hour widely elsewhere you see the peak winds never never really reach further southwards than sort of northern wales the north midlands northern england but you can see by around tomorrow rush hour as i said those winds could be very strong along that east coast 50 60 70 miles per hour even in the far southeast 50 maybe 60 miles per hour so even if even areas in the south not getting the brunt of this storm but there still could be some significant impacts tomorrow morning that we've got to keep an eye on of course now beyond that wind should slowly die down uh, through monday it shouldn't be too bad by the evening we see more stronger gusts coming in but this is not associated by any significant low pressure system gusts only get up to 50 60 miles per hour but as we head towards the end of the week you can see very strong gusts coming back in and this is from a west northwesterly wind with um, very cold polar maritime air mass. We're going to be seeing one of these very unstable wintry air masses move in by the end of the week. So if you do have a look at the precipitation, you can see the big hook in Storm Corrie moving through at the moment. And as I said, that precipitation should slowly sort of peter away through this evening. Still seeing showers down in the far southeast by uh, this evening, but it should slowly peter away. And then we see snow showers moving through northern Scotland through tomorrow morning. And then beyond that, things turn drier through Monday. Still some showers in the west, but nothing too crazy before we see more precipitation move in across northern Scotland. Spreading through, but being pretty light through Monday into Tuesday. But as I said, as we head later into the week, we start seeing much, uh, much more unstable air mass. You see a big cold front sweep through early hours of Thursday. Could be very squally along there. You see the darker colours there. Uh, or see the red colours within that where the front. And you start to see snow over high ground. And beyond that, seeing real un settled and unstable air um, mass moving through with heavy snow wintry showers even falling to low-lying areas something we had a few weeks ago we had very unstable air mass and again i'd expect maybe yellow warnings out for ice and snow for this and right towards the end you can, can still see those wintry showers especially in the north and west but maybe not exclusively uh, bringing 
the widespread risk of falling snow, significant snow, of course, will still be over the higher ground um, for any snow lovers out there. It doesn't look like we're going to be seeing any major snow at the moment in the next week or two but this is by the end of the week so still could be some disruptive weather this week now if we do have a look at max temperature you can see earlier this morning it's actually pretty chilly um around freezing widely but temperatures picking up today and we're going to be seeing temperatures around six eight degrees some areas even seeing 10 degrees in the far southeast but turning colder in north and i said by midnight tonight um, we could be seeing temperatures fall readily below freezing, but still 5, 6 degrees in the south. By tomorrow morning, once all that cold air has spread through, we could be seeing widespread frost in northern areas, especially across England and Scotland. Um, again, wintry showers falling onto those surfaces. We could be seeing some significant ice, and that's why we've got that ice warning about. Tomorrow um, afternoon, temperatures are going to really peak around 5, 6 degrees. So pretty chilly indeed, with a strong north northerly wind as well coming in. Now, beyond that, you can see when... Um, Monday not too, uh, Monday's not too bad, as I said, Tuesday night, staying above, freezing quite widely, and Tuesday in the day isn't going to be too cold at all, temperatures around 11 or 12 degrees, you can see those temperatures are really going to be up and down, and then as we head towards Wednesday, 10, 11 degrees again, Thursday, you see that cold front spreading through 4 or 5 degrees in many areas, 10 degrees in the far east, freezing in the far west, and you can see Thursday evening is going to be a chilly one, widely freezing or below freezing, and as we head towards Friday, you can see um, as that unstable air mass moving in many areas around freezing or below freezing with wintry showers falling. They will readily settle over higher ground. And of course, even to low lying areas where we do see this wintry, uh, wintry showers falling onto the colder surfaces. We could even be seeing some snow to low lying areas and could be settling for a time. Not expecting anything significant by any means because it's a northwesterly polar maritime air mass, but could be chilly at least for a day or two, bringing the risk of widespread wintry showers. Now, if we do have a look at the main models, have a look at the longer term, as Storm Cory does pass over the next day or two. We're seeing some interesting charts today. There's a lot of uncertainty as we head into February. Some runs are going bitterly cold, others are going much milder. Some are going into a sort of beast from the east freezer pattern. Others are going into an early spring heat wave. So, it's difficult to say at this stage, so much uncertainty um, beyond this week. But you can see Storm Corrie moving through at the moment. Then we have a bitterly cold northerly wind moving through tomorrow. Temperatures will be pretty chilly, as I said, 5, 6 degrees, and will feel colder than that with the feel-like temperatures. As we head to the end of the week, you see that polar maritime air mass moving by Friday. If we look at the upper air temperatures, widely below minus 5 and GFG HPA. GFS is a bit of a milder run here, actually, and we're seeing some other runs going even colder than that. Beyond that, though, we do start to see um, the signal for more of a westerly flow. But as we head towards um, sort of two, 10 days, beyond that, we start to put in a bit of a northerly flow. And you can see there, pretty chilly, cold, northerly wind. And we stay with the high pressure, and it builds up towards Scandinavia, and we actually go into a pretty chilly easterly flow. And again, if we have a look at those 850 HP temperatures, widely minus 5 line getting through, and expect... As we have that hanging around, we'd get that minus 10 line through eventually. So GFS operation run from the midnight run, going very, very cold. Now, somebody asked why we're not doing the 6 head run. It's not fully come out, and the ensembles haven't come out as well. So I think there's maybe a bit of an issue there. But the midnight run has fully come out. You can see it goes really cold in the longer term. But don't look at this too literally, as there is so much uncertainty in the longer term, as we'll see at the ensembles at the end of the video. Now, if we don't look at the GM run, now you can see again, some very similar with westerly winds, uh, but that cold polar maritime air mass moving through by the end of the week. But as we're towards day 10, you do see a bit of a ridge building in the North Atlantic, but I'd expect that just to go northerly, not looking like any major blocking from that. So still chilly at day 10, but not going for anything majorly cold. Uh, but it still would be chilly, of course. We'll be seeing some wintry showers around in places. Um, again, I'd expect um, still colder days, but also some milder, unsettled, windier days as well. Now, if we do have a look at the ECM WF, again, over on Meteo Seal. Now, you can see, again, that cold e uh, westerly wind moving in by the end of this week, but it is very temporary. And by 240 hours, 
um, or by 260 hours, it's starting to bring a bit of a balmy southerly wind up from Spain by 240 hours. Got another low pressure system pushing in off the Atlantic, but no blocking to our north. Generally, the flow is coming from a west or southwesterly direction. So, ECMWF run much milder. And again, if we have a look at the upper air temperatures for this ECMWF run, you can see milder air pushing up from the south. So, not looking cold on the ECMWF run. And just shows you the amount of uncertainty we have um, around day 7 to day 10. So anyone saying, uh, anyone giving a sort of a deterministic forecast at this stage beyond day five, day seven um, is, uh, yeah, it's got a lot of uncertainty. So I wouldn't take any of that too literally at this stage. And that is well reflected on the GFS ensembles, as you can see. Uh, if we do go to the entry of the HPA temperature and precipitation, you can see at the moment around average, but that cold air mass moving through over the course of this evening, bitterly cold, minus eight degree line moved through, but it very much responds to around above average by the start of February, by the first, second, third of February, by early this week. If we see another drop off as the polar maritime air mass moves in by Thursday, Friday, Saturday time, before we see another rise in temperatures, and that's pretty consistent within the ensemble members. And then we have massive, massive spread. You can see Operation Run going along with many, many other runs, getting down to the minus 10 region, bitterly cold north or easterly winds. Then you've got others going very, very mild. You can see generally it just comes out to around average. So no consistent signal at this stage in the long term. Could be going cold, could be going mild. I wouldn't favour the cold just simply because whenever we have seen cold so far this winter within the ensemble time frame, it hasn't come off. But we can always hope and pray. At this stage, though, it's looking very up and down over the next five days. Very stormy. Could be some wintry surround by the end of this week. Um, and again, beyond that, looks still quite westerly and unsettled. But there are signals, as we saw by the GFS operational run, and by some of these ensemble members of high pressure, trying to reach in from the Atlantic towards Scandinavia, potentially pulling off a bit of an easterly wind. But at this stage, you can see there's a lot of spread, and we have no consistent signal with that. But, the, but for the time being, make sure you stay safe out there with Storm Corey. It's going to bring some disruption over the next 12 to 24 hours. So please make sure you take the necessary precautions. Listen to your local uh, weather warnings um, and do not take any risks out there. Um, as this looks like it's going to be the last uh, sort of named storm for at least a few days um, or at least maybe five next five days. So do stay safe out there. Um, make sure um, you do not get in, too impacted by this wind. Hopefully most of the strongest winds fall overnight tonight so not when many people are out but please just do stay out stay safe out there because i'm really hoping we don't see any more incidents or, and fatalities from these strong um winds we are seeing so anyway thanks for watching hope you enjoy subscribe if you're new and i'll see you again for another video soon